The retinal layer at the back of the eyeball contains cells that are sensitive to light. Photons falling on this layer are turned into electrical impulses by the receptor cells there. The optical nerves carry this electrical current to the visual center at the rear of the brain, which interprets the current and gives rise to images. In other words, if the cells in our eyes perceived these photons not as light but as heat, then instead of perceiving an object as red, we would perceive that it was hot. All these findings show that the eye is merely an intermediary unit that converts photons into an electrical signal. No senses of light or color form in the eye. We give the name of a color to photons at various frequencies of vibration. Red, blue, yellow, when all frequencies are combined together, the result is white. In other words, this piece of paper is white because it reflects all photons of different frequencies. This leaf is green because it reflects only those photons at a frequency that gives the impression of the color green while absorbing all others. This box, on the other hand, is black because it absorbs all photons and reflects none. In other words, none of the photons falling on black objects are reflected into the eye. When people refer to a structural disorder in the eye, this actually means that photons are converted into some different electrical signals in the retina. As a result, the visual center in the brain perceives the same object in different ways. That is why colorblind people confuse certain colors with one another and are unable to perceive others at all. These facts show that concepts such as white, green, or transparent are actually perceptions forming in the brain. In other words, they are completely physical phenomena that occur in darkness. The external world that we imagine we see as brightly colored consists of perceptions and interpretations taking place inside that darkness. In fact, there is a three-stage wall between us and the original matter in the outside world. First, we can never see the original of the television we sit in front of nor what kind of reality it possesses in the outside world. What reaches us is merely photons leaving the television, in other words, physical particles. We can never go beyond these particles. This is the first wall between us and the original television. When its photons reach our eyes and strike their retina, they are turned into electrical energy by the enzymes there. At this stage, neither do photons exist. This constitutes yet another wall between the television and ourselves. When nerves carry this electrical energy to the visual center in our brain, it changes form once again, taking the form we refer to as images. We can never pass beyond this image. In other words, we never perceive the electricity reaching our visual center, nor be aware of its existence. This is the third wall. Even one single wall may distance us from the true existence of the television, and we can only perceive that data regarding that existence after it has been subject to change three separate times. Now, Imagine that you are part of an experiment. You are unable to leave this underground chamber for a whole year. Your only link to the outside world is this closed circuit television screen in front of you. When you turn the television on, you see the following message. The images you are about to see on this screen are being screened live from cameras in Africa. Images from these cameras are transmitted live to satellites and from there to receivers above this room, from where they are forwarded to this room. Is that message true or not? You can never be sure, 
because every stage of the transmission can possibly have originated from an artificial source. Moreover, the image you see may also be from a cassette plugged into a video in an adjoining room. Yet since you are unable to leave the room, it is impossible for you to go see the original African scenery for yourself. Yet, what if you had lived in that room since the day you were born? What if you can never leave? What if, for your entire life, you see the outside world only on that screen? In that case, it is highly unlikely that you would think that there was an original of every image on the screen, because all that was truly there was images on your screen. Facts such as these in the realm of sight also apply to the senses of hearing, touch, taste, and smell. All of these impressions we perceive in closed chambers in our brains. Never can we make direct contact with their originals in the outside world. The sounds we listen to on the radio originate inside the hearing center in our brains. There is actually no sound outside, merely physical movements in the air that we refer to as sound waves. After going through various processes in the inner ear, these physical movements come to us as electrical signals. What do the electrical signals we perceive as sound correspond to outside? We can never know. The sounds we hear in this closed room, and which we imagine to be coming from the jungles of Africa, may also be artificial sounds produced in the room next door. We can never have direct experience of any matter existing in the outside world. The ground we walk on, the sky, the houses we see, trees, cars, and human beings, in short, everything, are merely objects that we can reach as perceptions. In other words, we actually see a copy of the external world in our brains, and all images, sounds, smells, and tastes exist solely in the relevant centers in our brains, just like in a dream. Dreams, imaginary worlds, in which you may sometimes be a knight riding to battle, sometimes a deep-sea diver, and sometimes even have a completely different body. We see, touch, and hear various objects around us when we dream, and perceive their existence in exactly the same way as when we are awake, yet these are all experienced in our minds, and none are actually real. A dream is an assembly of perceptions resulting from the interpretation of stimuli reaching the relevant centers in our brains. Dreaming, like all mental processes, is a product of the brain and its activity. Whether a person is awake or asleep, the brain continuously gives off electrical waves. At most times during sleep, the brain waves are large and slow, but at certain times they become smaller and faster. During periods of fast brain waves, the eyes move rapidly as though the sleeper were watching a series of events. This stage of sleep, called REM, rapid eye movement sleep, is when most dreams occur. During REM sleep, the pathways that carry nerve impulses from the brain to the muscles are blocked. Therefore, the body cannot move during dreams. The cortex is stimulated by neurons, nerve cells, that carry impulses from the part of the brain called the brain stem. And after being made happy or terrified by these perceptions belonging to objects and events that correspond to nothing in the world of reality, we open our eyes and wake. It is quite clear that we do not experience the original of the external world we live in either, but only a copy of it inside ourselves. 
This is a fact that many people are unaware of. The reason for this error is that we are deceived into thinking that there is also an image belonging to our bodies inside this universe of perceptions. In other words, we make the mistake of thinking that our bodies represent our true identities. We think of the skin that hurts when cut, our tongues that taste, and our ears that listen to pieces of music as ourselves, and have no doubts as to our own physical existence. Yet, like other objects, we can have direct experience of only a copy of the body in question.